welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are doing a recap and review of love island usa season 2 episode 26 so we are back on the set of um the villa in lovely las vegas and we uh come back to the scene because we left off with the last two girls lakin and julia doing their strip tease and the girls definitely took a liking to both Calvin and also Carrington. And I know that made Lauren feel some kind of way, but we'll get into that later because that whole thing slowly progressed into a different direction. But um, Julia tried to have her way with Calvin and it definitely seemed like it raised his heart rate. And then, of course, she tried with Johnny, but Johnny was like, uh, nah, I'm good. You know, I mean, he enjoyed the view, but I don't think he want to take two steps backwards after taking 10 a week ago. So um, we also had Julia doing a little strip tease for Caleb, but he didn't really budge. You know, he kind of turned his head to the side and was like, yeah, well, whatever. And the girls were doing their dance, you know, to get them all excited. But now, since they're done, uh, the results are all in for the Hearts on Fire scores. So, um, you know, before we get to that, you know, the girls now come back and they introduce themselves to the two new girls, Lakin and Julia. But then a text come in to now reveal the girls' scores. So first we have Justine, and according to her heart rate score, look like the person that raised her heart rate was Carrington. Well, that was a surprise. So then we have Moira, and who raised her heart rate in this particular scenario was Caleb. So then we have Kirsten. And who raised her heart rate was also Carrington. So for Laurel, who had her blood pumping was the one and only Mr. Calvin. And honestly, I really truly think this is who she needs to be with. So then of course we have Sally and you know who lit her fire even though she was a fire girl was Johnny. So we're going to flip to the other side and then we have with Carrington, with the guys, the person that lit his fire or his heart rate was Lakin. And he definitely was feeling that. So, and we'll get there later. So then we had Bennett and Julia was the young lady that lit his heart rate. And then we have Calvin and Sally lit his heart rate. So obviously she was doing a little something, something that got Calvin on fire. Then of course, Johnny, Sally lit his heart rate. No, no big surprise there. And then with Caleb, surprisingly, it was Laurel that got his heart rate up. And he said it was probably more the fact that he was just surprised because she's such a sweet girl that he was shocked how she came, you know, with the fire that she had. So let's start off with our first couple, which is uh, Justine and Caleb. And Justine had um, some concerns that she wanted to address with Caleb. And she, what her concern was is that she said she was having a problem because she falls very hard and very quickly. And um, the biggest issue with them is that she's the one that's always initiating. And that he's been, I mean, she's been waiting for him to do the initiating. And, you know, Caleb is like, you know, if that's what it takes, I'll take the lead and I'll do it. Um... I like the way that they did that because sometimes when you try to tell somebody or put a suggestion out there, sometimes your significant other will try to deny it. What do you mean? Are you saying that I don't do that? I think I am. No, he took that in stride. He listened to her communication and he said, you know what? 
I'm going to take the lead on that. And he was happy about the fact that she was able to communicate with him on that and the fact that um, they're able to talk about things like that. It really, really, really intrigued him. So I'm glad that they had that conversation. So you guys tell me what you think about it. So the only other thing with this particular couple is that they assisted um, Johnny in putting together a little event, which we'll talk about later for his um, little lady, Sally. And other than that, they didn't have much. They just had that conversation and it went well. So let's talk about Moira and Calvin. Moira realized she had a little bit of competition with Calvin. And they made her feel some kind of way. So she decides that that got her juices running as she was telling the girls. And that a little competition is something that's going to make her move a little forward. And the girls said that they heard a lot of smooching going on. So, you know, it really definitely got Mora going, you know, now that she feels that she have competition and that um, things might be giving her a challenge. So let me know what you guys think of that whole situation. I think it's kind of unusual because why do you need to have a challenge in order for you to realize who Calvin is? I mean, Mora threw him in the friend zone twice. And the moment this new girl comes on and shows some interest, I mean, even Calvin said the same thing, like, she got all touchy-feely with me, and, you know, I mean, obviously, he didn't stop it. He definitely enjoyed it, but he was he was surprised. It's like, what is this girl doing? She's sending mixed signals or what? So, let's talk about Calvin, because he had a little sit-down with Julia, and uh, Calvin asked him, you know, hey, so tell me why you're here and what you're looking for. And Julia's like, hey, you know, I just want to meet someone. You know, I'm a party girl. I want to have some fun with someone. And it was something interesting that Calvin said, which is extremely important. And what he said is, you know what? I don't necessarily need someone. I just want someone. And I I honestly, I think that's pretty profound because usually in the state of need, is scarcity and desperation. Whereas when you want something, you want it because you're ready for it or you're choosing to have it. So I'm liking his mentality on that whole thing. I mean, you guys tell me what you think about that. Was that something that was pretty interesting to you or did you see it otherwise? But honestly, do I think I see a connection with those two? No, not really. I think I see his connection better with Laurel and you know while she was going through the whole thing which we'll talk about later with Carrington and her Calvin was giving her you know some assistance with trying to calm her down and soothe her thoughts and everything so you know I I I think that with this whole thing it was a good opportunity for them to talk who never who knows where this might go So they had a little separation of conversation, the guys and the gals, and they were discussing the girls. And so Bennett was saying, hey, you know, I'm definitely into Kirsten, but at the same time, you know, I'm open to having some discussions and getting to know some of the new girls. So that's pretty much where he's at. And that's all we had on those two. So let's talk about now Johnny and Sally. Um, Sally told the girls, you know what, we're all good right now. I mean, um, I'm confident, you know, we trust each other. I think we needed to go through this to see if we can come out on the other side strong. And I mean, Johnny is also saying, hey, I'm not interested in anybody else coming in here. I I need this time to continue to build with Sally. So I'm glad he learned from it. It wasn't just a situation of, oh, I'm scared. I got caught. You know, all of this stuff came out. And then he goes back to his old, you know, what he'd done before with new people. But no, Johnny is like, no, I'm good. I'm all in. I don't need nobody else but Sally. So, 
you know, it's good to see that, you know, these two are happy. Like I said in my previous videos, I mean, hey, it doesn't matter, you know, we might have our feelings toward it, but it's up to the two of them where they decide to go. It's their lives. So, you know, I just wish to and hope for the best. And as we see, there's some things coming along. So Johnny decided to recruit both um, Justine and Caleb to put together a little, um, I would call it a proposal. And not of marriage, of course, but he decided that he's going to officially make Sally his girlfriend. So he's going to ask her to be his girlfriend. So he wants Justine to kind of manage how Sally is going to get to the spot and how um, everything is going to be set up by him. I really think this is cute. Now, let me ask you guys, and I want to read your comments because you guys are very, very vocal, which I love. I love reading you guys' comments. Do you think it's too soon? Do you think he's actually ready to move into this? Or, you know, is it a, do they need to give each other some more time? Now, granted, time is limited in the villa. We got to take that in consideration. This is not an ordinary situation. But truly, are they ready to move into a relationship, in quotation marks, with each other, which is going to transcend outside of the villa? Or do, they, do he need some more time to kind of show, you know, that he can bounce back from what had happened? And Justine is just over the moon. She's excited. She's glad that they're back on track. You know, I'm, I'm curious to kind of see where they're going to go. I gave them a seven prior to this whole thing. Eh, I give them a seven and a half. I just need to know where they, you know, how solid this is. You know, is it just surface until another girl that peeks him or even another guy? But I don't think Sally's going to sway if that was the case. I think that's more of Johnny, but he seems at this point to get his, to get his act together and got his head on straight. That was he was scared straight um, in regards to his relationship with Sally. So we'll see um, what's going to happen. Let me know what you guys think. But um, yeah, I mean, Justine is kind of getting a feel of where her head is and kind of trying to talk her into a direction of getting her set up for this whole main event that Johnny is, is um, you know, putting together. And I think it's cute. If, if we was to erase everything that has happened in the last three, four days on the show, I think this is one of the most romantic things ever. I mean, we haven't actually seen what is going to go down. We won't see that till tomorrow. But, you know, I'm curious to see, you know, what the actual event is going to look like. But the planning, it looked like it was pretty fun. So, I mean, Justine, I think she did a pretty good job trying to get her framed up to, you know, get this going where, um, cause she, I mean, even Sally said, Hey, I'm just waiting for him to ask me to be his girlfriend. And all Justine could do was laugh because she knew what was coming. She knew exactly what was coming, but I'm glad that she had, you know, at this point, she's happy at this point, Johnny's happy, you know? And so what do you guys think about that big old heart of 10 towels that uh, he made that he's going to put in the middle of the floor? I thought that was so cute. I thought it was cute. I thought it was creative. But um, I'm ready to see how this is all going to play out. You know, I, honestly, I'm just hoping that Johnny is ready for this. I know Sally is. I just want to make sure he is. So she's getting all dolled up, and honestly, that little purple outfit she had on, I thought that was really cute. I thought she was going to actually wear that outfit, but she decided to wear, um, I think, a little midriff type outfit with um, a suit jacket. So, you know, it was cute and comfortable for her. 
And then we now have the handsome Johnny who has a blue suit. Ladies, what do you think about his outfit um, and what he had on? But, um, you know, the girls are really excited. Um, she doesn't know. She's totally unaware. And, um, you know, I honestly, I think they did a good job of concealing it because she definitely had no clue up until the point what was going on so um you know Sally was basically telling her you know I'm looking forward to what life looks like on the outside and he's feeling the same way Sally is like you know we've been on an insane wild ride and all of this is going on while he's getting flowers and I think the guys look so cute because he wants them to dress up like a butler with white shirts and black pants, you know. So he's definitely trying to make it creative. And I'm glad the guys are all in, you know. I mean, I have a feeling that all of the guys are going to be probably real good friends when they leave the villa. So, but I thought it was so funny that Johnny was hiding uh, in the kitchen area trying to get an idea and wait for Sally to come around the corner and to see how it all, <clears throat> excuse me, how it all plays out. But, you know, Justine brings her out and, you know, Sally is looking like, okay, what are we doing here? What are we doing? And she sees Cal um, Calvin standing at the end. And she's like, what are you doing just standing there? And so, you know, she realized that something was up Johnny's sleeve because, of course, he was like, hey, I have something from you, or I say for you, rather, from Johnny, which is a message. And they left it right there because, of course, we'll see exactly how everything is going to unfold. And she's excited. He's smiling. Of course, I think she knows what's coming, which is to ask her to be his girlfriend so we'll see guys all right let's get to this last couple and two other people because calvin is the main attraction and of course kirsten is still a piece of her that is interested but we have a situation where we have both um julia and also um lakeland lakeland yeah, Lakin. Lakin, both interested in the handsome Calvin. The problem with Calvin, and I'll go into it a little later, is that I think he gets a kick off of being, um, a kick out of being a little emotional available because it works for him. I mean, if you've seen the past, with uh, these two, and I think I saw somebody's comment. I don't know if it was in our channel or if it was on Facebook that Carrington does not like to open up. And a lot of times with women, they like that intrigue. They like that mystery. And that's what attracts them. So obviously this dude here, he knows exactly what he's doing. But what was interesting is when he had a conversation with Lakin, they connected over the fact that they both have family members that has autism. And um, they even talked about their siblings and they covered a lot of personal ground. And that was pretty interesting being the fact that, you know, he only known this girl for a day. And I'll tell you why that's intriguing when we get to conversation with Laurel. So then he also had a conversation with Julia. And, you know, the conversation with Julia wasn't as, you know, he's open to getting to know her. And like Julia said, you know, he wasn't on the top of um, her list. But the fact that, you know, he seemed to be pretty smart surprised her. But, um, yeah, there's no connection there. Do I think that there's a connection with him and Julia, though? I don't know. Just because they connected over the things, the personal issues with their families, that could go a long way, you know, with these two. So, I don't know. 
I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think he has a connection with Lakin? I definitely don't feel it with her. But, you know, we'll see. So, Julia get a text about the fact that she can get to choose one of the Islanders to take on a date. And, of course, her choice um, of an Islander was, of course, Carrington. And I know that had uh, Laurel looking some kind of way because she's already feeling something with this whole thing, knowing that he has other girls after him. And then Lakin also got a text saying that she gets to choose an island to go on a date. And she also chose Carrington. So Carrington is a hot commodity today. And unfortunately for, you know, Laurel, it's going to be, she's in a difficult spot because she's built up an attraction to him. And she's definitely feeling some kind of way about this. You know, um, I mean, she even said something when, wear something ugly. I was like, girl, really? Don't let you, stay confident, you know, just be you. If he's going to be with uh, Laurel, he's going to be with her. Yep. And the thing is, too, is that there was a little tiff in the beauty room um, because, of course, Lakin was gushing over her date. But and people was like, oh, I feel sorry for him. And Laurel was like, you don't have nobody don't have to feel sorry for him. And I'm like, no, just just chill. Don't get out of character. You just got to stay true and see what happens. But she has a better connection with Calvin, so maybe she should have picked him. So um, Carrington decides to take both of the girls on a date at the same time. And, yeah, he's strutting out there with his chest out, one girl on each arm, and Laurel is just eating her up inside. And, you know, the thing is, is that... There was some conversation, I need to touch on that, about um, him opening up to her, and she found that out. That was part of the conversation in the beauty room. She found that out about um, them have a connection with autism through their family members, and he, she was like, why he didn't open up with me like that? He only known her for one day. So the place that they went to for their date um, it was absolutely beautiful, and it was called Charles, Charleston Peak. And even um, Carrington said that it reminded him of Utah. And I don't know if you guys have, I've been to Salt Lake. It actually does look like that. It's, it's pretty beautiful. I really like that. But you can tell that with him and Julia, that there was no connection. It felt like a friendship. Um, Julia said, hey, you surprised me. Um, you, you get like you got a good head on your shoulder. We got a, stu a lot of stuff that we both like. And, you know, uh, Carrington said, hey, I like your confidence. You know, I would have never guessed. And she said that her interest was in dragon fantasies. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to have to broadcast that all over the villa i'm like really okay carrington it ain't that serious but i guess you know he was joking but um he said he's definitely very interested in getting to know her and you know i i don't see it but in the meantime she's sitting over there bored meaning um lakin and she came over there to grab him and like excuse me can i borrow you for a second I need to steal you for a bit because I've been waiting over here bored. And his whole demeanor and the tone of his conversation changed when he was talking to Lakin. And he said, you know what, to be honest, I expected you to come and take me on a date. You know, my heart rate went up and, oh, my God, I was so excited and then the fact that, you know, we got a lot of things in common, how we share what was, you know, the things that's going on in our family and dealing with members who have autism. And um, 
you know, he, he said something interesting. What stuck with him is when he think of when his parents are gone, you know, how are we going to be when we have fam, you know, family members that's left behind with autism? And I'm like, wow, that's a um, pretty deep conversation. So it's definitely something there that attracted him to Lakin to feel comfortable talking about this. I mean, they even talked about, you know, certain things that was an issue with Laurel, which is distance. And Calvin, I mean, Carrington was like, hey, you know, I'm only going to move somewhere where I'm most comfortable. You know, I'm not going to move somewhere just because. And that's one of the conversations. And I've been happy with Laurel so far, but after a conversation that we have, I'm not so sure. But I am definitely 100% into getting to know you. And in the meantime, the couple that should be a couple meaning Laurel and Calvin are having a conversation. And he's definitely trying to, you know, calm her down, help her to feel, you know, not so anxious. And honestly, I really think she made the wrong choice because he's not there. Carrington is aloof most of the times when it comes to the different people he's with. And of course, they had, you know, once he got back, Um, they'll have a conversation about that and we'll definitely touch on that. But there's definitely some form of connection for him to feel that he is so open with Lakin and only after one day, you know, I think that's, um, that's pretty interesting to watch. And so it's, it's going to be, um, a couple to watch to see what direction they're going to go. Well, I won't say a couple. I don't know if he's going to recouple with Lakin, but Laurel got some competition with her, but I have issues with Carrington and these issues are going to come about when he's having a sit down conversation with, um, with her. So yeah, I, I mean, honestly, Carrington, I, I've seen some of the comments on social media and in some of the groups, and uh, it, they're not good right now. You know, I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I'm not going to bash him or anything. It's just some things that I'm seeing in his pattern with the previous women that he's dealt with. So um, we'll definitely talk about that. But Laurel is so upset and the girls are trying to console her to help her feel more secure and a a little bit more confident because she knows that there's a disconnect somewhere. And I mean, granted, it was put on the table a little bit when they had that conversation about Calvin, you know? So, I mean, because for a moment, it seems like Karen Carrington was really into her. But the moment Calvin was put on the table, it kind of threw a rift in their situation. So Carrington and the girls are back. And, um, you know, of course, uh, Laurel is definitely looking to see, okay, what what's he going to do? What has happened? How was the date? What's his next move? Is he going to come talk to me? And he's, she's trying to pick up and see what type of energies are now coming back. But he came over and kissed her in front of them. So she said that made her feel a whole lot better. But yeah, we know differently. Because he definitely had a connection with Lakin. So, I mean, it was a moment of happiness, you know. But of course, it's only short lived. And she knows that there's a disconnect. She knows that. Um, there are some issues that's going to be happening with the two of them, you know, because they do need to talk. They definitely need to talk. But in the meantime, before we get to that conversation, Lakin and Julia have a, a, a little conversation about what they thought of their dates with Carrington. And Julia was like, yeah, I feel more like friend vibes with me. And even, um, Carrington said the same thing to the guys, you know, Hey, I, I'm not, it's not a no go with Julia, but I'm definitely, you know, a hundred percent interested in talking to Lakin. So 
Carrington is in a pickle here, but um, yeah, Julia's off the table. Lakin is what's going to be the issue here. Is he going to decide to go with her or is he going to fix this whole thing with Laurel? And honestly, Lakin is like, oh my gosh, she's such a sweet girl. I don't want to have to break her heart and say, hey, I had a good time on the, on the date with your guy. So she pull her to the side. They have a conversation. And Lakin told her, you know, I know that you're coupled up with him. But, you know, I just want to be upfront and honest with you. Our date went well. We had a good time. And I just want you to know that. And, you know, I'm not trying to hurt you or step on your toes. But I, I at least want to be honest with you and let you hear it from me. Guys, what do you think about that? Do you think that um, that was a good move on her part and that was mature? Or do you think she was trying to be a little petty? I don't know. I'm in, I'm in the middle with that one. So let me know what you guys think. And in the meantime, Carrington is sitting back watching all of this. And they hugged it out, you know, and, you know, ended the conversation. But you can tell Laurel was just not feeling this. So let's talk about this conversation that Laurel had with Carrington. So, of course, Laurel was trying to figure out, so how did your date went? And he took control of the conversation up front by saying, you know what? I told both of the girls that I'm coupled up with you. And that right now it's going to take a lot for me to change my mind. And that, you know, I'm with you. And I'm like, really, dude? That's what we're doing. And then when she said, well, um, Lakin had a conversation with me and said, you guys really connected and you had a great date. I mean, are you actually interested in pursuing something with her? Or are we doing our thing? And he couldn't back out of that one. And I'm glad she put that question on the table. He was like, well, you know, me and Julia, you know, we're in the friend zone. But to be honest with you, we do connect. We connect on a lot of different things. And yes, I'm into you, but I'm definitely open to talking to her. I mean, he couldn't back out of it. You know, he tried to take control of the situation in the beginning. But when she called him on that... And I'm glad she did. And she also reiterated the fact that he was so open with her on day one. And he could never be that open with her and know about his family members with autism and his family dynamic and things like that. And he was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm all in with you. I just want to be able to explore, you know, other options. And she's touching on him and they kiss each other. And hey... I just see this as a disaster waiting to happen. You guys let me know what you think. But at this case, I feel sorry for Laurel. I really think she should have chosen Calvin. So let's do our post notification shout outs. And if you want a shout out, just comment down below. I select them on every video. So our first person is Nita Norman. Thank you so much for engaging in the channel. I really appreciate it. And then also, hello, hello, Jeannie. Thank you as well. I really appreciate it. Keep commenting. And so like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow.